I'm back. And this time, with a build video, but not a house build video. A build build video. For the Endless Archive. Hello, it's Icy. That's right. I am back with the very rare, very unexpected build video. Uh, so this is the character I put together to run the Endless Archive. Because, of course, as a housing Mansa, there are so many tasty, tasty furnishing plans, leads, all sorts of stuff in the Endless Archive. Plus, of course, just running it is... Uh, I actually am really enjoying it. Um, I am somebody who does, on occasion, do uh, Maelstrom Arena, Veteran, uh, and Veteran Vatishran. Um, I do have a no-death clear, not with this character, in VMA. Uh, and I have once made it to the leaderboard on a Sork. Now, I did come and try the Endless Dungeon on my Heavy Attack Sork. No. Uh, actually, no, I take it back. Um, it works very well up until the second Thoat. And then after that, it's the, the pets are basically dead all the time. So I wanted to build something that would have more reliability, more robustness, um, could go further if wanted, but otherwise could just clear those first two levels really, really simply, with it, mostly without dying. Uh, in fact, without dying full stop. So, uh, in, on top of that, the best of the new class sets, uh, the one I liked the look of the most was the DK. So I thought, oh, okay, let's use my poor neglected DK and see what I can do. Um, and this is the build I've settled on, and I am very pleased with how it actually has been performing. Um, in a group uh, with... Jessica, thanks Jessica. We got as far as Thoat. We we got to the round before Thoat six, which is pretty good. Now I know there are lots and lots of people who've gotten so much further doing all sorts of fancy stuff. I'm not trying to be one of those people. I just want to get feel respectable when I do it. So let's take a look at the gear first. Now this is fairly simple gear. Um, it's a little might be a little bit pricey. But it's something that you can probably get hold of fairly easily. So we're starting with the lightning, the sergeant's mail set. So this is farmable from Wayrest Sewers 1 and 2. Um, and the idea of this is that you're running a heavy attack build with this. So you absolutely need five pieces of this. I would suggest that if you're sticking to like rounds 1 and 2, you just do like you would for any other heavy attack build where it's weapons and jewelry and then basically chest or legs because uh, you get more armor from having it on the major pieces. However, and I haven't tried this because transmutes are expensive, um, if you used more sergeants on the body pieces and went with like more of a heavy armor set, then it's definitely needed for later on in, um, you know, like after say, I've been up to four single uh, solo on this build uh, and then after that absolutely I would need sort of more resistances from armor and things but this will get you through easy um, up to throw at two and probably most of the way through throw at three in fact you, I have killed throw at three though it's it's a bit of a bit of a frantic fight so the other main set I'm using on here is the deadly set so the deadly set um, gives you increase the damage uh, your damage over time and channeled attacks do by 15%. Heavy attacks are channeled attacks. So it's really, really, really boosting your heavy attacks. So there's no flame uh, type bonuses for any of the armor I'm wearing here. Uh, there are a number of DK sets, oh sorry, there are a number of flame bo boosting sets. Um, I certainly tried um, uh, the sun, okay, Silks of the Sun is one that some people recommend as well, which is a heavy set as well, um, and um, I think I'd like to try Sunder Flame. It's a stamina set technically, but it could be interesting in here. So, but Deadly works, and it works well. So I'm using um, Divines on everything. Uh, you could, 
Infused is unnecessary uh, on a heavy attack build because uh, you don't really need extra magic or extra stamina. Uh, you might also think about whether you wanted to put something that um, boosts your armor uh, or something along those lines, or you know, healing taken, those kind of things. So uh, also using one piece of slime crawl uh, for the extra crit, that could be switched out for something uh, that had other benefits, for example, extra health perhaps, um, or extra armor. There's a bunch of different sets, so you're only using one piece, so you only need to consider the, like, the first number. So the deadly set is medium, uh, so I'm using a light, uh, a light shoulder piece along with the one heavy piece as well. So I'm getting the undaunted 511 buff as well for extra um, extra health and resources and of course uh, because this is a one bar heavy attack build we're using the oaken soul ring so the oaken soul ring is farmable uh, you need to access the antiquity system uh, and you also need access to the high isle chapter uh, both of those i believe now should be accessible through eso plus uh, otherwise, yeah, and there are heaps of guides of how to get Oak and Soul floating around on the internet. Um, so one of those will direct you. Uh, and this is, I've created a new version with Transmutes that does Bloodthirsty as well. So I have um, Bloodthirsty on the jewelry. You might consider um, switching that out for something more defensive as time goes through. Uh, and I do have a flame enchantment on the lightning staff of the sergeant. I personally do not like the other stars for the on heavy attack it the timing just feels terrible it feels wrong my dps drops away so i just stick with the lightning staff and i use it and then just put the flame enchant on instead uh if you're otherwise um weapon damage enchant uh is my other what i would normally run on other characters so that is the gear now let's talk skills so one bar build so very straightforward so we have deep breath uh, which is in the the draconic power tree the last one uh, and we're using the deep breath more specifically because as you use it it actually sets enemies off balance as you suck it in as you get further there is a different morph that does healing instead uh, it doesn't sorry it doesn't extra healing but doesn't do the off balance see how you go uh, but one thing I would say is as you get to the Thoat battles later on say three and above there are a lot of things that need interrupting or killing immediately and the deep breath will take care of it and it's really really good so um, I would recommend deep breath over the other morph but either either will be fine um, then we have burning embers so Usually the way I would do it is I do a long heavy attack and as I get close enough to the enemy then I'll slash them with this which will give you a nice bunch of um, damage on them and a nice heal as well as it pops so that's very effective. I mean if you can hit them with this first great but this is a melee range skill um, and obviously you are not necessarily in melee range so I, I like to do it the other way. We're going to skip the third skill because that's a flex zone. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, Resolving Vigor. Um, now, it's not the heal as such. I mean, the heal is great and you need a heal. You need multiple heals, in fact, as you get further along. Specifically, this skill is in here is to give you the minor resolve. So this is to give you the resistances because you really need resistances in this. Later on, you, you might be fine. I would say that the first round of Endless Archive up to killing the first throwout is about the same difficulty as a normal dungeon. So use that as a guide um, to see like how much resistance and healers and stuff you need. But I really like this on here and I find it very effective. And then we also have Coagulating Blood. Um, so this also does a heal um, and it's also giving you health recovery as well, which is both of which are very, very helpful. Um, and just keeping that active on your character. Uh, for an ultimate, we are using Shooting Star. Um, some of the other ones might be fine. Uh, this does, it's all that lovely flame damage. Um, and it keeps doing flame damage in an area afterwards. It, it's just, all of those DK bonuses really, really help. Now, the middle slot. It can be any slot, of course. You 
put your put your keys, <laughs> your skills in whatever slot you like. So um, this is a flex slot. Uh, so early on, um, I'll use a damage option uh, while I don't need as many defensive things. So usually it will be Molten Whip, um, which will then boost the other skills, or it might also be Engulfing Flames as well. That's also a really helpful one to have um, on here. Now, as you start to get to, things start to get harder, uh, then I would start putting on more defensive skills. If you're in a group, uh, I would recommend Cauterize, um, which will give you um, the additional heal to the player. You know, don't need the um, weapon, weapon spell crit, you're getting that from your ring. So it's really just that, that first option there. Um, and then the other one I'll sometimes use is the Volatile Armor as well. The advantage of that is it's basically reflecting damage um, so that can be very helpful too most of these skills i mean in fact they're all class skills apart from the heal and that works out quite well uh, for the endless dungeon there's a lot of buffs and things that you can choose uh, to take that will boost your class skills which helps a lot for the dk so let's talk champion points shall we now a couple of things um so uh up here in the kind of the weapon damage tree, we're using Thermoturge, um, which is the damage done, uh, the dots basically. There you are doing, um, you can also go with um, the direct damage as well is another option because the heavy attacks count as direct damage, but the heavy attacks also count as like a dots and channels. So this one works super well. And then we've got Fighting Finesse, which is just increasing the crit. This is not a very high crit build. Um, as it stands currently, it's about 50%, which is in fact a little bit lower than that. So it's on the low side, but it's it's okay. But yeah, it's not super um, not super high crit. Definitely Weapons Expert for the heavy extra heavy attack damage. So we're doing an extra 20% heavy attack damage. Um, the Wrathful Strikes for the extra weapon and spell damage. Uh, this build doesn't use the weapon and spell enchant, um, so that's also another one that's great. Uh, and then we go over to the red tree. Now, these a lot of these can switch in and out as necessary. Boundless Vitality, you just need the extra health. You really, 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 really need the extra health. Extra armor, ditto, you just need it. Um, so these last ones you can drop in and out depending on what works for you. Uh, celerity is very helpful maybe early on as you want to get through everything real quickly and just kill everything as fast as you can. Um, a juggernaut um, and Slippery both become very useful a lot later on in the stages. Uh, you, If you're with a companion, like an axe, sorry, if you're with another player, not a companion, um, Spirit Mastery could be very good. So you can do fast reses. Survival Instinct is also very good when you're in the status effect, you're taking less damage. One thing you really don't need on a heavy attack build um, is you don't really need, uh, I mean, this one maybe, but you don't need the magic or a stamina recovery. Health recovery is always wanted. So really think about that. And you don't really need like the usual um, thing that a lot of people have will be siphoning spells or bloody renewal if you're stamina. You don't really need it on a heavy attack build. As long as you are properly getting those heavy attacks off 90% of the time, you'll almost always have full magicka. So do, you know, like they're not necessarily required. So uh, if you're really great at blocking and bashing, maybe look at some of the defensive options as well. So yeah, this has um, been a particularly effective build. I mean, let's just, uh, this is sort of early on. I don't think I'm going to be able to get you all the way up so you can see uh, Thoat. So as you can see, I'm just heavy attacking. I um, mean, these guys are going to die too quickly for me to show you really what's going on. Just keep the buffs up, the heavy attack, and the other thing you can do with a heavy attack build is you just have to hold down the heavy attack button and at any point in time you can hit the next skill and it will just automatically trigger after the heavy attack is finished. 
So it's a very relaxing way to play. <laughs> uh, and I really, really enjoy it. Um, so that is my heavy attack DK uh, build. And I think it works really, really well. Um, so I've been doing very fine. Fine, no problem. It about takes me about mm, 20 minutes to about 20 minutes to get to throw at one. Probably about an hour to get to throw at two. And then I can just keep going if I have time <laughs> for as long as I can. Uh, if you're a housing mancer, all you need to do is repeatedly get to throw at one. Uh, and you will unlock basically all of the housing sorts of things that you will need to get, including that absolutely giant, gorgeous globe uh, that I was standing next to in the in the entryway. But if you try this build out, let me know. Is there any tweaks that you'd recommend? Any other different versions that you'd try? Also let me know. My ultimate aim is to basically replace the deadly set with the set that for the DKs that you collect from the Endless Archive. It'll take me a while. Once I get there and I try that set out, I mean, I might do a follow-up video to say, oh no, this works real great. Or I might do a follow-up video saying, actually, it's no good. Uh, if you're not sure if this build is for you and you have a PC account, don't forget you can actually test all these pretty much for free on the public test server. You can make up a test character account. They'll have all of the different sets uh, on in their inventory basically and you can pick and choose and do some experiments and see what works for you and what doesn't. Uh, if you have the transmutes, <laughs> you can just try it and see. Deadly set, I didn't say, can actually be either um, bought from guild stores um, or you can use um, your uh, alliance points, currency from and purchase piece, random pieces from Brummer from the merchant in Brummer. Um, so do have a look out. The, the best way I got that, which was a while ago, was I just bought random wrong pieces, like in bad traits, and then used my transmute crystal to make them into good traits. And that worked fine, so. But let me know in the comments if this is something you'll try. Uh, if you do try it, or if you've got a different build that you've been doing really well with, let me know in the comments as well. Thank you very much for watching. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.